realizing what the Lord had done and our awe of the Lord is uh, going away from us. We are not fully appreciating or appreciative of the things that the Lord had done to us. So it's uh, good if we can be reminded of this and look at them one more time. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10. Uh, we all know this, but we will read this in unison. Ready, read. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for once again giving us this chance to be together and open your book, O oh God, to study the truths that are therein. We thank you, O oh God, for salvation, the most important possession that we have, the most important gift, the most important thing, Lord, that a person can have because we are sinners, Lord, and we are condemned to death. But because of your grace, your love, and mercy, you sent your only begotten Son to die on that cross to pay, Lord, for what we cannot pay for. And that is the penalty of our sins. And in so doing, O God, you not only saved us, but you opened the door that we can be freed from the power of sin. And that one day, we no longer be in the presence of that sin, but we will be with you eternally. But in the meanwhile, Lord, help us, Lord, to be fruitful. That our life, Lord, here on earth will impact the lives of many people and will glorify your name. And that we can enjoy, O oh God, our stay, even though this world is not our home and we are just passing through. Even though, Lord, we are just pilgrims and strangers, but we can see, Lord, that there is a purpose as we walk this earth. So I pray, Lord, that help us so that that purpose, Lord, will be achieved. And in so doing, O oh God, many people will be saved and many people will be encouraged and your name, Lord, will be lifted up in the midst of the earth. Lord, tonight, forgive us of our sins and help me, Lord, to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we are going to study tonight all about salvation. All about salvation. So the verses that we have read is very clear that our salvation is because of the grace of God. When we say grace, it is an unmerited favor, something that we cannot achieve. Only God can achieve and only God can give us. There is nothing in me that can merit salvation and there is nothing in you that can merit salvation because the Bible is very clear when it said that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. So all of us are condemned to die. That is to be without the Lord, without the presence of God and to be in hell, being tormented night and day forever and forever. That is our lot. That is our destination. But because of God's love, because of God's mercy, and because of God's grace, we are now saved. Amen. We are now freed from the penalty of sin. We can now be victorious over the power of sin. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, some golden daybreak, he is going to take us away from this world, to be with him forever without the presence of sin anymore. A place where there will be no more sorrow, a place where there will be no more crying, a place where there will be no more death, because there is no more sin, and the sting of uh, a death, which is sin, is forever conquered and forever vanished. That is our uh, prospect as people of God. And then it is very clear that our salvation is a gift, therefore, uh, as I have said, we cannot merit it because it is a grace given freely by God. It is not of our works, though many people wanted to believe that they can be saved by their works. 
but not realizing that even our good works are as filthy rags in the sight of God because everything that we do as sinners is contaminated with sin. A dirty container, no matter how pure the water that you put in that container, will be contaminated by the dirt of that container. And that is who we are. We are sinners before God. Whatever we do is always tainted with sin. It is always tainted with uh, a selfish motive. It is always tainted with boasting. And that is why the Bible says that our salvation is not of works. Why? So that there will be no boasting when we get to heaven. Amen. Yung Tito Vic and Joey, tama na rito yan sa mundo. Yung payabangan, tama na yan dito sa mundo. Yung pasikatan, tama na yan dito sa mundo. When we are in heaven, when we all get to heaven, there is only one person that we're going to honor. There is only one person that we're going to praise. There is only one person to whom we are going to give the glory, and that is Jesus Christ. Why? Because of him, we will be in heaven. Amen. It is not going to be anybody else but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But then our salvation is not the end. It is only the beginning. Once God saved us, he will begin his workmanship. He is going to start working in us. And what is he going to work in us? He is going to work in us that we may do good works. Amen. Why? Because a saved person or a Christian is destined to do good works. It is ordained for him to do good works. Why? Because if we cannot do good works after we get saved, then what will be the uh, uh, what we call the benefit or what will be the uh, proof that we are really the children of God? What's going to be the difference? The Bible is very clear when we were commanded to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works so that they can glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. You see, the difference is this. The world will do good works so that they will be glorified. Men will do good works so that they will be lifted up. Para hanaan. But as Christians, we are going uh, to do good works not for us to be appreciated, but while we are doing, doing good works, we are pointing at the Lord Jesus Christ to God be the glory. Amen? Because of the things that He has done in our lives. So we are not doing good for our good. We are doing good for the glory of God. Because whatever good things we may be able to accomplish is not because of us. It is because of the Lord Jesus Christ living through us. And that is something that we must always be reminded of. So what is uh, about salvation? Let us read several verses and see uh, these things about salvation. Let us uh, go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 26. Galatians 3.26 For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you see, if you put your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are a child of God. In John 1.12 it says, But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. So it is very clear, not all people are the children of God. There is a philosophy that is going on in this world, and that philosophy, or humanistic uh, teaching, that we are all uh, brothers and sisters, and we are all the children of God. No. Before we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not the children of God, but we are the children of the devil. Yes, we are created in the image and the likeness of God. We were formed in the likeness of God, but we were deformed by sin. So if we are going to repent of our sins and accept Jesus, then we are going to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ as God transforms us to be a new creature. Look at John 8, 44. 
It is very clear when the Lord Jesus Christ told the people that he's talking to that ye are of your father, the devil. So the devil has his own children who are his children like him. They are liars like him. They are murderers like him. They do, do not speak as the truth like him. There is no truth in them. And if a person habitually sins, then he is the child of the devil. But as I have said, when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then John 1 12, you are given the power to become a son or a child of God. Even to them that believe on his name. That's why Galatians 3 26 says that we are all the children of God because we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So that is very clear. Look at 1 John 3 2. And this possession or being a God's uh, child is something that we have now. You see, beloved, now are we the sons of God. It's not going to be when we die that we're going to be uh, a child of God. When you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you repented of your sin, and you put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, right then you became or become a child of God. That is why he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. I am a child of God. You are a child of God. If you have faith in Jesus, we are all the child of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Why? Because sometimes we act as if we are not the children of God. Because when they look at us, we may be just the same as the Lord. But, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know we have that assurance in our heart when He shall appear at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be like Him for we shall see Him as He is. So this is not my final feature. This is not the final me. And that is not the final you. Any imperfections will be removed. Anything that is not good will be removed. And we are going to have a body like the body of Jesus Christ. And we are going to be like Joel Austin said. But in a biblical way, the best version of us. Not today, but in the future. Amen? Because our best, best version today is still tainted with sin. As we are still in the flesh. And the Bible is very clear that no flesh shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? So we are going to be changed so that we will be adaptable to the environment of heaven or new Jerusalem. So what did the Lord Jesus Christ do in order for us to be like this? Look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse number 26. Hebrews 9 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he came into this world. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried and he rose again in order to put away sin and put all of the sin to himself, buried it deep into the earth so that they will not be remembered anymore by God the Father. So the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ became the propitiation for our sins. That when God will look at us, He will no longer see us as sinners, but He will see His Son, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that was imputed unto us. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. The Bible says, but this man, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. So the work of Jesus is a one uh, eternal transaction. You cannot add anything to it. You cannot remove anything from it. It is a perfect sacrifice it is a completed sacrifice. So after Jesus Christ offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God, signifying that he has finished 
his work. That is why when he was about to die on the cross of Calvary, he says, it is finished. But you know, sad to say, some of our Catholic friends want to continue what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Pag mahal na araw, nagsasakripisyo rin sila, hindi naman ikaw ang pinagsasakripisyo. Kahit anong sakripisyo gawin mo, hindi mo mababayaran ng kasalanan mo. Bakit? Kasi makasalanan ka pa rin. Kailangan magbayad yung walang kasalanan. Si Kristo lang ang walang kasalanan. So, nung binayaran niya, sabi niya, tapos na. Sabi naman ng iba, itutuloy. Marunong ka pa kasi sa Panginoon, kaya hindi ka maligtas. Yun naman itutuloy. Pagkatapos na itinuloy, itutuloy din naman nila yung kasalanan. Sabi nila, meron pa namang isang taon, next year uli, magpipinitensya na naman ako para na naman mawala ang kasalanan ko. At pagkatapos mawala ang kasalanan, inuman na naman. So, they do not understand what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, it is a finished work. It is a complete work. It is a finished transaction. Look at 1 Peter 3.18. The Bible says, Likewise, hindi, bigla sabi ko, punta yung mga wives na naman dito, bakit? For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. How many times did he suffer? Once. Ewan ko bakit ang mga tao gusto pahirapan ng Panginoon taon-taon. Minsan lang daw. Sapat na yun. Hindi yung tuwing misa, katawan ni Kristo. Amen. Sinakripisyo na naman. Tuwing may misa, sinasakripisyo ang Panginoon. Hindi ho. Dapat ganun. Yung po ay blasphemy. Yung po ay insulto sa ginawa ni Kristo. Bago natin tuloy ang basa, balik tayo sa Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never oh, never oh, never never enough kan tayo. Never Take away sins. Ano na yung ginagawa ng mga priests ng Old Testament? Ano yung ginagawa ng mga priests ngayon sa Catholic Church? Ano yung ginagawa ng mga work salvation? They are offering a sacrifice, same, again and again, that can never take away sin. Walang kabuluhan. Why? Because Jesus Christ already finished the work. So why do you have to continue it? Let's go back to 1 Peter 3.18. Uh, for Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just, only Jesus Christ is the just, for the unjust, that is uh, who we are, that he might bring us to God. Who is bringing us to God? Jesus Christ. Not Mary, not Paul, not Peter, not Santa Claus. Not anybody else. Not my father, not my mother, not the pastor, not the priest, not the pope, not the cardinal, not the ministers. For Christ also at once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. That is why the Bible says that we must be born again, born in the Spirit, because the Spirit is the one that quickeneth. And that is our relationship with God. So we need to understand what salvation is. Because if not, then we can be swayed. We can swerve. And we can be deceived by those who are teaching another gospel that Paul says that even we or an angel will teach you. Uh, let that person be a curse. Look at John chapter 19. 30 and 31. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So you see, 
what happened on that day the lord jesus christ died that is according to prophecy that is what he is going to do and then look at colossians 1 20 and 21 and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled romans 5 8 but god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners enemies of christ he died for us that is what he did that is why his death on the cross he's dying on the cross our salvation is so special that he did it for his enemies who will die for his enemies the bible says you will die for your friend but no nobody will die for the enemy but the lord jesus christ died for us and that is the grace of god so that is about salvation that is what the lord jesus christ did for us you see when i was a, a new christian i think i, I was just uh, about three or four months as a christian we were invited to attend a good shepherd uh, ba uh bible baptist church in mabalakat uh, being pastored by pastor ramirez and pastor duenas then was uh, an assistant pastor i don't know if you remember that and we and there was a, it was actually a a young people's fellowship and there were there was a quiz bible quiz that night and one of the questions that were asked is uh, for us to arrange a faith facts and feeling you arrange it uh, in order so that it will result to salvation uh, 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 because i was new not yet uh, familiar with the doctrine but just using my analytical uh, corrupt mind i ended up with faith fact and feeling i said there must be faith in the fact and then you're going to feel something good but the answer is fact faith feeling because without the fact yet if you will put faith first where are you going to put your faith everybody has faith but what is the object of the faith so what must come first is the fact the truth and then you put your faith in the truth and then because you put your faith in the truth later on you're going to feel good about what you did so as i was reminded of that we're going to look at that tonight but we are going to add something else and we will see uh, what salvation is all about aside from what we have already seen and where salvation will lead us okay let us look at the fact of salvation the fact of salvation is this that all the work that needs to be done for the sinner salvation christ did and is doing together with god the father and god the holy spirit we have nothing to do with our salvation that's a fact katotohanan po yun wala tayong gawa o contribution sa ating salvation o hindi pastor naniwala tayo hindi hindi mo contribution yun naniwala ka tinda yung salvation salvation na yun maniwala ka tinda yung salvation tapos na yun ginawa na ni Cristo yun hindi nakasalalay sa paniniwala mo o hindi yung kaligtasan yung kaligtasan finish yun gift na yun Tanggapin mo, hindi. Gift yun. Pag tinanggap mo, nasa'yo. Pag hindi mo tinanggap, wala sa'yo. So we have nothing to do with salvation. Christ's work was and is a perfect redemptive work. Wholly acceptable to God. That's why it is the propitiation. It appeased the anger of God. It satisfies the requirement of God. It is the, the type of the lamb being sacrificed on the day of atonement a perfect lamb without spot without blemish a male of the first year 
sacrifice, blood sprinkled in the Holy of Holies. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Look at Hebrews 9.12. <coughs> Hebrews 9.12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, this is what they're doing at the atonement, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So this is what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the, uh, uh, when he died. That his blood was sprinkled in the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle which is in heaven, signifying that the work of salvation has already been completed. That is why our salvation is holy by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's the fact. What is the faith? The faith is very simple. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. If you will put your faith in the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ obtained eternal salvation for us, that you will repent of your sins that cause us to be separated from God in the first place, and you turn to God, then that faith will cause us salvation for by grace are he saved through faith and that not of your self so we have nothing to do with salvation it is a gift of god it is free a gift is free wala pong gift na may bayad pag may bayad hindi gift yun oy may regalo ko sa iyo sandaan bentahan yun sale yun hindi yun gift a gift is freely given and a gift is freely received not of works so not of the things that we have done so that nobody can ever boast look at Acts chapter 16 31 ito yung ko eh maraming nakita nyo ba yung post grabe yung dating daan ano bawat nag agree talagang kunyari Haji panoorin mo to kung paano tinalo ni Soriano sa debate si Joel Madlangawa lahat pati Amerikano eh Hindi man lang niya in English eh. Kaya sabi niyo sa Amerikano, what is this in English? Talagang punong-puno ng bitterness. So ito yung pinos ko. And they said, well, there is a question. 30 first. This is, this, this is very, very clear. And brought them out and sirs, and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? The question is very clear. Sa Tagalog, mga ginoo, Ano ang gagawin ko para ako ay maligtas? Maluwanag na tanong, di ba? Parang ganito. Jed, ano ang gagawin ko para ako'y mabusog? Ano sagot mo? Ha? Oo, kumain ka. Para ka mabusog. Pag di ka kumain, di ka mabubusog. So maluwanag yung tanong, maluwanag yung sagot. Maluwanag yung tanong, Sirs, what must I do? To be saved. And the answer is very clear also. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Liwanag. Sumampalataya ka sa Panginoong Yeso Kristo at ikaw ay maliligtas. O ikaw ay ligtas. Ikaw ay maliligtas. Pag sumampalataya ka. So, this is the faith in Salvation. It is, it is a believing on what the Lord Jesus Christ did and believing that the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ must die on the cross of Calvary is because of our sins. So therefore, we will turn our back on our sins. We will chase our mind. We will repent and we will turn to God as faith. And then we will be saved. Look at Romans chapter 4 verse number 5. The Bible is very clear. But to him that worketh not, oh, see? hindi gumagawa, ngunit sa kanya na hindi gumagawa, but believe it on him that justifieth the ungodly, ngunit sumasampalataya sa kanya na nag-aaring ganap sa mga masasama, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ang kanyang pananampalataya ay binibilang na katuwiran. So that is what we need to understand. The fact must be received by faith. Don't you know that in the Gospel of John alone, 
The word believe is used 100 times. Signifying that salvation must be believed, must be received, must be something that we need to grasp not only intellectually but holistically. That is a, a what salvation is all about and that our faith must be put on that fact of salvation. It is very clear that it was the Lord Jesus Christ who said this very emphatically in John chapter 6 verse number 47. John 6 47, ito sabi niya. Verily, verily, you see? When in the Bible a word is repeated, it is for emphasis. In Tagalog, katotohanan, katotohanan. Hindi lang katotohanan, katotohanan pa. Sabi, totoong totoo. Pari di ba? Meron talagang totoong tao eh. Parang, totoo yung tao na yan. Emphasizing the, uh, the goodness of the person. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So clear. So, fa fact, and then you put your faith in that fact. And then what is next? Hindi. Kailangan muna ng fruit. Fruit. Yan yung, yan yung, yan yung uh, kailangan natin maintindihan. That we are saved to bear fruits. We are not saved just to go to heaven. Because if the only reason for our salvation is heaven, then the moment we receive Christ, then we should be in heaven instantly. But we are left here because there is something that we need to do. Before the Lord Jesus Christ went up to heaven, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So there was a command given unto us that we need to do because now that we are Save. In John chapter 15, verse number 8, it is very clear that we are branches attached to the vine, and the vine is the Lord Jesus Christ, and it giveth life. And because the vine giveth us life, then it will make us bear fruit. Here is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. A disciple is the one who is bearing fruit. If you are not bearing fruit, then you are not a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have a fake profession, but a person who has a genuine profession will always produce fruit. Look at Second Peter chapter uh, 1, verses 3 to 11. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life, and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises amen that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature that is the divine nature given to us by God having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. So if you have, we have all this, we're not going to be barren. Did I make him spiritually? or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So listen, there is a danger of forgetting what we are even though we are already saved. When we lack at these things, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. If you will do those things, if you will have fruit, then you're not going to fall aside. Then you're not going to be one of the casualty, but you will continue flourishing and blooming for the Lord. 
for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you see, there are things that must happen to us. There are fruits that we must bear. And we can also see this in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 21 to 26, except that the first of the fruit of the Spirit is love. And love is always preeminent. Amen? Because God is love. So listen, we are not saved because we bear fruit. Remember that. But every believer should bear fruit because he is saved. Hindi tayo maligtas dahil tayo ay namumunga kung hindi kailangan tayong mamunga dahil tayo ay ligtas. So it is not the fruit that saves us, it is faith. But the proof that we are saved is the fruit of our faith. So, meron kang love, meron kang joy, meron kang peace, meron kang temperance, meron kang patience, and it's a say na lahat. You add to your faith all of this fruit of the Spirit, then what will be next? Then you are going to have a good feeling. I've got a feeling. Amen? Doon palang darating yung feeling. That is the time that you are going to what? Look at Romans 15.13. That will be the time for the feeling to come. Eh, ang ano kasi, ang mga charismatic Pentecostal, baligtad, nauuna yung feeling. Uy, na-feel mo ba ang Diyos kagabi? Bira. Naku, hindi ko na-feel. Patay, hindi ka ligtas. Ako, feel na-feel ko eh. I can feel it in my head and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. I can feel it in my hips and it's keeping me alive. Di ba sabi nila ano? Keeping me alive. Ganun eh. I can feel it in my body and it's keeping me alive. Okay. Uh, they emphasize feeling. But what we must emphasize is the fact. And we must put our faith on that fact and then we must bear fruit because the fact it is that we are now saved. And when we experience these things, then we are going to have a feeling. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It means that even though there is a pandemic, there is joy because you know that no matter what happens, you have an assurance of the love of God and you have patience and you have temperance and you have love and you have joy. Then circumstances will not affect you anymore. Though sometimes we are affected by circumstances, but it will not linger for a long, long time. Kasi pag kristyano, nalungkot ka pa rin naman eh. Lalo na kapag ka may nangyaring para sa tingin mo hindi maganda. Nalulupaypay ka rin eh. Nangihina ka, nalulungkot ka. Nahuhomesick ka rin, may namimiss ka rin. Meron ka rin nararamdaman na na para bagang nagpapabigat sa iyong damdamin. Pero kapag ka naalala mo yung kaligtasan, naalala mo yung ginawa sa iyo ng Panginoon, na, na ang Holy Spirit ay nagbubunga sa iyo ng pag-ibig, ng, ng, uh, ng mga bagay na binanggit sa Biblia, then y- yung panlulupay pa, yung, yung kalungkutan ay napapawi at napapalitan ng kagalakan ng Panginoon. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Romans 14, 17. This is the kingdom of God. This is what we need to exem- exemplify. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Pag ang baptist, walang pagkain. Tsaka inumin, malungkot. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You see, it was mentioned in, in 15, 13 about the Holy Spirit and mentioned in 1417 about the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the feeling of joy comes from within and who resides in our heart? The Holy Spirit of God. And God, the Holy Spirit, will give us joy. No matter what our 
our circumstances may be. Now, salvation is not by feeling, but by faith. It is not by behavior, but by belief. But if you are saved and fruitful, then you will be filled with joy and peace. And that is a good feeling. Amen? So when the believers believe God's word, then there is going to be that, uh, that uh, feeling with him as he walk in good works that God has ordained him to walk. Colossians 1, 3 to 4. No, Colossians 3, 1 to 4. I'm sorry. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye shall also appear with him in glory. Amen? That's why our mind must, miss, must be set up in heaven. Our affection must be set up in heaven. Our treasures must be laid up in heaven. So that when the Lord Jesus Christ will come from heaven, then we will feel that we are in heaven. Heaven? Hey, amen? That is what we're going to feel. Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ hath done in our lives. And listen to me. You cannot find a lonely, sad uh, a Christian who is walking in the will of God. You see, you have read so many uh, biographies of Christians who in extreme and dire circumstances are joyful. Why? Because they know that they are in the will of God. Just, just read the lives of the missionaries who were butchered or even killed in foreign countries, but they are gladly to, to accept and face death because they know it will bring glory to Jesus. I, 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 I forgot the name. I gave this an illustration before. That there were two Christian friends who were in prison and it was announced that one, one, one of the, among the friends will be burned at stake. And this one that will be burned at stake is the one that has a very strong faith in God. And the other one also has faith, but his faith is not that strong. So he was so curious and he told his friend that, friend, he said, when they burn you at stake, when you are burning, can you raise your hand so that I will see that even in, in the midst of that difficulty, God is with you. And he said, my friend, if my hand will be released, he said, I'm going to do that for the sake of your faith. So the time came that he was about to be burned. And then while he was burning, so the, uh, the rope burned and it, it, it uh, allowed him to release his hand. And then slowly he raised his right hand to the joy and amazement of the friend. But then it was just the beginning because slowly the other hand are being raised. And then in the middle of that fire, he clapped his hand before he finally died. And you know, that act of that friend made the fate of his friend stronger. And that friend faced the same fate because he stood for his faith in the Lord. Why? Because, you see, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were not even hurt by fire. Why? Because of their faith in the Lord. Amen? Walk in the will of God! And you will not experience the fang of death. Stephen was stoned to death. But there was no account in the Bible that he was hurting, that he was shouting, that he was agonizing. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 7 that Stephen lifted up his eyes and saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing up with stress, fought, hand, welcoming Stephen. Why? Because God's grace will be enough even at the time of death. Walk in the will of God. And there will be that feeling. Amen? And then, after everything is said and done, 
What are those things? That we should be worthy of our calling, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. As Christians, we should be worthy of our calling. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. For our sweet smelling savor. Then he will have the feeling of assurance in Acts chapter 13, 39. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So because of that justification, it will bring you a feeling like no other. Amen. And then, so you have the fact, you have the faith, you produce fruit, and you felt good, and then time will come that the future of our salvation is that we are going to be with Jesus forever. Amen? You see, that is the hope. That is the blessed hope. That no matter how hard it's going to be here, it will stop. That weeping may last for a night, or for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. That there is always a a silver lining even in the midst of the darkest storm that no matter how hard it's going to be it's going to come to pass and when that happens we will say it will be worth it all amen, amen. Ephesians 2 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You see, this is a forever, future, never-ending bliss and glory in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. May secret ako na sasabihin sa inyo. We shall not all sleep. See? So even if some of you are sleeping, not all will sleep. Remember that. Some will still listen. So you will sleep. I don't care. Eh, 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 eh. I will keep on preaching because some are still awake and listening to the word of God. Amen? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Yung sleep dito mamamatay, hindi dito tayo lahat mamamatay. Pero tayong lahat babaguhin. Kailan? Tuloy. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, ganun kabilis. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. What? To an incorruptible body. A body like the Lord Jesus Christ. A body that will never feel pain and sorrow anymore. That there will be no more problem, no more tears, no more night. No more, uh, uh, no more uh, crying in that place. No more cemetery, no more hospital, no more vaccine. Nothing of all of this sort. Why? Because we will be in a perfect environment, in a perfect body, worshipping the perfect God. And that's where, what we are going to experience. So those who abide will be raised. And we which are alive shall be changed. And a body is like the glorified body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Philippians 3, 20 and 21 and we will close here. For our conversation is in heaven. Means say our life. Not, not uh, communication. From whence also we look for the Savior... The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. Vile body. Katawan na, corruptible, masama, hindi maganda. Kahit yung Miss Universe, vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue 
all things unto him self. That is the future of our salvation. Secured na ho tayo, mga kapatid. Secured na. And gano mang kahirap, secured na. Gano mang kasakit, secured na. Gano mang kasikip, sabihin mo, secured na. Gano man na, napakaraing kabagabaga na ating nararamdaman, secured na. This is the future of our salvation. We may not live according to His will, but we are already secured. But what a life will it be if we are not going to live according to His will in spite of all the things or despite of all the things that He has done for each and every one of us? That is why we need to understand the fact of salvation. The greatest work that has ever been done in the history of eternity great much greater than the creation of the heaven and the earth much greater than the creation of all the vegetation that are here on earth much greater than the creation of the universe much greater than the creation of the first man and woman in the garden of eden because it is a creation that will never be changed forever and ever the greatest work that has ever been done our salvation faith the greatest response that we can do to what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Fruits, the greatest service that we can do because of the salvation that the Lord has given us. Feeling the greatest emotion that we can have. Emotion that is not because of the temporal things that we have, not because of the money that we have in this world, not because of the silver and gold and the fame and the power, not because of that but because of what the Lord Jesus Christ will produce in our lives. The first and then the feeling and then the future, the greatest prospect that we can have. That one day, all of this will be gone. All of this will be burned by fire. But before all of those things happen, we will be with him. We will see him face to face. As the song says, oh, what a moment. When we see Jesus, when we are face to face in his embrace and thank him for amazing grace, oh, what a moment. When we see Christ, we will see our departed brethren there. We're going to have an eternal fellowship. Masasabi natin pagdating doon, Abraham, dati pinag-uusapan ka lang namin, ngayong kinakausap na kita. Timothy, dati pinag-aaralan ka lang namin, ngayon nag-aaralan na tayo sa isa't isa. Pero higit sa lahat, ang pinaka magandang mangyayari sa atin, the greatest thing that will happen to us in heaven is to be sitting down at the feet of Jesus. It will, it will make us remember Mary. When, when she was sitting at the feet of Jesus, when the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching about eternal things, about spiritual things, you will be reminded of that. And we may not even leave that place anymore because He's going to be with us forever. So that is all about salvation. It is not just to know that we are saved, but to know that we have made the greatest decision that we can make and that we can do the greatest thing that a man can do and that we can feel the greatest emotion that a man can feel and then we have the greatest prospect that a man can have and that no matter how hard it's going to be, one day, one day on that golden daybreak we're going to see Jesus Amen. Shall we stand up please Father in heaven we are so thankful 